Hey guys, and welcome to Fight the Dragon. Fight the Dragon is a community-based hack and slash RPG. It's kind of like you spawn into a world and then you complete a user-created dungeon or a dungeon created by the developers. It's more focused on community maps, though. So I received it as a free review copy from the developer th Three Sprockets, and I've been quite impressed. So I'm just going to hop right in and explain the characters to you. So I actually started off just trying out um, the War and Rogue, but I'll explain all the characters first. So you have the fighter. The fighter is your main just hack and slash character. He has high attack, lower specials, high health but average stamina and speed. Okay, His pass ability is to gain rage 50%. Or sorry, he gains rage slowly while his health is under 50%. So what rage is, is to, in order to cast your special powers, um, you need to build up rage. So you deal rage by, I believe, dealing and taking damage. So the more damage you deal and the more damage you take, the more rage you build. But the fighter also builds rage over time. So... Every class also has a secondary ability, which for the fighter is a shield slam. So he swipes the front with his shield and knocks them back. It's actually quite useful because the fighter tends to kind of get overwhelmed because of his low speed and stamina. He has a couple specific weapons, the hammer, the greatsword, the hatchet, and the spear. So moving on to the fire lord. The fire lord, exactly it says, heat up, warm up your enemies by setting them on fire and calling down massive molten rocks from the sky. So your passive ability is Molten Feet, takes much less damage from lava. You have Ember Trap, place a fire trap on the ground, detonate when enemies come into range. So Fire Lords are more depending on their special attack, having lower attack, health, speed, and stem, or well having lower health. It's not a, pretty much what I'm trying to say, is he's more focused around special attacks than the fighter is who's more focused around melee attacks. So, and then you have the ice wizard, which is similar, but he keeps your enemies cool, freezes them in place with frosty attacks and start hacking away in peace. So, the ice wizard has an interesting ability, slowly regenerates health while in water, which could be, is quite useful. If you're on a map with water, you have infinite health. So, frost shield creates a personal shield that detonates when hit by an enemy. So both the wizards are good with the same. They have staffs, wand, fire crystal, and tomes. So the only thing to note is fire wizard is a little bit less powerful with special attacks, but he has more health. And lastly, the character, the black rogue. So confound your enemies with the wily rogue, use stealth and gadgets to gain the upper hand. So the rogue has the highest stamina and speed in the game. However, he has very low health compared to the other classes. His special is all, also relatively low, but he has quite high attack. Not as high as the fighter, but he can't have, well, he should have as much high if his stamina and speed is maxed. I've kind of played around in the game, and the character I like the most actually is the Black Rogue. The health thing kind of scares me that he only has two bars of health. but. He's really easy to dodge around with. He gets away from enemies and gets in and out of combat really easily. So that helps you quite a bit over the slower fighter who can get overwhelmed quite easily. And on top of this, um, sprinting and dodging rolls cost 25% less damage. So it's even easier to get in and out of combat. So your secondary ability is to throw a grenade that damages nearby enemies. Sorry, I didn't know if I told you, but... The first one that creates a personal shield that detonates when hit by an enemy. Which is quite useful, but it's only like a one hit thing, so and it takes about a second to cast, and it's only available for about three seconds, so it's as in not hugely useful, and it uses up a lot of your stamina. So the grenade is good for areas, but it doesn't do a lot of damage, but it probably scales up later in the game. So the rogue has similar um or what I'm trying to say is both the fighter and the rogue can use the spear. But the rogue can also use the crossbow, spear, two daggers, two swords, and the shuriken. So we are gonna pick the black rogue. We're gonna name him the Greenling. And if you thought I was gonna name him anything else, 
Well, I don't know why you think I'd name him anything else. So, this is our world map. As we complete missions, it will open up more and more, which is cool. But, so you could also fully customize your character, which we may as well. Um, what do we face do we want? Hmm. Oh, there we go. Ah, no, I don't think that's a warrior's face. Get someone who looks like he'd be a sneaky, roguey guy. And this guy looks kind of sneaky. Uh, do we want different hair? There's like mohawks and stuff too. That's kind of sneaky hair. I can see a sneaky guy. You could. Uh, why I'll set the. <laughs> That's kind of crazy. You can have your hair like way off your head. I don't know why you'd ever want that, but I guess it's a cool ability. Oh, you can make... Oh, well that's also interesting. You can scale your hair. Um, there's also workshop items in this game as well, which is interesting. So we could add um, some new items. Why don't we just... Oh, I guess you guys can't take this because it doesn't record my Steam Workshop. Apologies, but... Um, yeah, that's a good idea. So, I'm just downloading some things quickly, so you guys can't see this, but, um, yeah, I got a, some cool stuff here planned. Okay. Oops. Okay. Oop. Okay. Hmm. Now how do I get to my workshop items I subscribe to? One second, guys. Uh, we can even do it after. I'll figure it out after. Sorry to do this during the video, guys. I apologize. It's very unprofessional um, of me. But, anyway. If you fall off the map, you're just going to respawn back here as well. To show you. So, to, if you want to do online multiplayer, you can do it here as well. Um, I have tried the multiplayer. I actually find it's a, almost a more enjoyable experience playing alone. Um, just because the pace is too quick when you play it on multiplayer. Cause like if you if you go to open up your inventory or something, your po your partner's already gone ahead, and is already fighting stuff. So ah, another treasure hunter, I presume. These ruins are full of old junk. You never know what you'll find. Just watch out for monsters. I heard some pretty scary sounds last night. Well, thank you, my friend. So um, you just have your regular left click attack. That's is that. And it's telling you if you pick something up and you don't have one, you'll automatically equip it. So this thing has a kind of interesting thing for potions. Um, we get shadow potions because, well, we're a rogue. But potions only last for this map. So I think that's really cool. It kind of encourages you to use your potions. You don't have to save them. We have one potion. Or you use your potions for that map. So if we right click, we can throw our grenades out but it uses our stamina okay we can also roll and if an enemy tries to swing you can actually dodge it and it actually tells you that that attack was dodged which is cool so um, so f for the most part we're not too squishy we don't have to worry about um, not getting hit too much it's just we can't be keeping taking damage. So if we need to take a health potion, we just click it and it's done. If we take a shadow potion as well, we can activate shadow. So we're in shadow mode, enemies cannot see us. So we get out of shadow mode, we got a critical hit. Oh, I think I actually stunned him. Cool. And we actually recharged our um stealth there. It's cool. So pull the lever. And you're in. You can stealth again. One hit the rat. So, stealth, very powerful ability. Um, 
It, but you would you would guess so because it's the rogue ability. So we have oh yeah, sword of reliability, common. So the thing it's gonna tell you here is we found a sword, but we cannot use it yet because it has a level requirement of two. Um, but once we hit level two, we can use it. It is a little bit better than our sword, but it is has a lower value. I'm not really sure why that is, but not a big issue. We also have flimsy gloves that have protection four. So this, whenever you get to this obelisk at the end, you end your adventure, it says, do you want to end the adventure? Once you end the adventure, you cannot go back. So if you dropped anything on the ground and didn't pick it up, it's gone forever. So we haven't really expanded the map yet, very much yet, but if we do another adventure, it will expand quite dramatically. So this is another, so this is, the first couple missions you do are always pre-ranged and after that, I believe they're random, so. You can also sprint using shift. Oh, they're gonna tell me about pressure plates here as well. So if, you, if you're if you in a group of enemies, you can just roll to dodge around and get out of the enemy's um, attack. Okay, we just leveled up. So two things we can do when we level up. You can check if there's new weapons you can use. So actually this weapon, it says junk, but it's actually, um, it's just according to the the Rarity. So like this is a common, this is junk. Junk items are worth generally worth less, but it's a level four sword. So it's worth more. So it's of the junk rarity, but it's a better it's a higher level drop. So it's a really bad sword for a level four sword, but seeing as both our swords are level one, it is quite good. Hope that makes a bit of sense for you guys. We also um got a skill point we can use. So you can Spread them however you would like. Um, strength affects how much damage you do. Defense affects how much you receive from enemies. Lock affects potion drops, loot quality, and damage dealt. And endurance increase your stamina. Since we're a rogue and we're kind of squishier, we kind of rely on potion drops um, and damage, and we can increase our damage through luck. So warriors would want to increase their strength, um, but rogues i think it's important for us to increase the amount of potions we get especially because we're kind of we're not quite a mage but we are kind of reliant on potions somewhat okay so i was just going to show you that if you when you smash crates sometimes a bomb will show up you don't you want to kind of get away from that bomb if you can then you pick up this barrel and place it on the pressure plate if you just stand on the pressure plate Obviously, the gate rises. When you get off, it lowers. Um, also, I don't know if I showed you. Every time you go on a checkpoint, you gain a life. Lives are up in the corner. If you lose all your lives, you fail the dungeon. Also, when you walk on a checkpoint, you heal up to a certain amount of health, which is quite useful. So, you could run around here, but there's actually isn't anything around here. It's mostly just if you fall down. So. There is a kind of, I wouldn't say it's hidden, but a, there's a less visible chest over there as well. So, smashing pots is a good way to unlock. So we open the chest. Had some shadow potions, which is good for us. So, I know this is pretty much the end. Oh, actually. I was, I was gonna use a shadow potion there, but so the enemy dropped a sturdy shield. So we can look at our shield. It has protect 19.6, 2.3 se second recharge rate. What that recharge rate is is I believe it's um, with your. Sh um, I think it's yeah your shield. I think it only take 20 hits points worth of damage. And that's how long it takes to recharge before you can use it again. So. So. Oh, I guess. oh yeah, see? Our shield took 4 damage worth. And then over 2 seconds, it recharges. Also, I want to show you this. The first time I played this, I couldn't actually figure out how to get through this door. Because I didn't have the red key. So I ran back here, couldn't find it, couldn't find it. They want to treat you to actually look at your surroundings. And figure stuff out. Now we have the red key, that door opens. If we don't have the key, it'll just blink above it and say, You don't have the right key. Go find it. 
So it's also a pot down here that you might not have seen if your camera was in oops, quite there. So anyway, go in here. Let's drink a potion and come. I like getting up behind my opponent. It gives you about half a second advantage over your opponent because he has to turn around and face you. Just small things you can think of if you're playing a rogue character. We did a charge so we can go invisible again, which we will do here. So we wanna... Well, that's his front. But... So we are taking a little bit more damage. We do not have any more potions, so we have to focus on dodging away from attacks. Oops. It's kind of, you have to be careful because if you swing swing you can't roll until you've actually done the, the attack duration so if I'm click click swing click click now I want to roll I can only roll after my swing so that actually makes it a, quite interesting as well so we got sword of blandness and a weak bu buckler also since we know the mission's pretty much done we're almost a favorite to just look at our weapons afterwards I'll also show you how to look at your um, items while you're in I wouldn't really call it town, but we will call it town for um, purposes of, to be. Well, pretty much every game calls it town, so we're just going to call it town just f because that's the easiest thing to call it. So we have done our adventure, press F, we completed. So this time, last time we got Dragon Skull, this time we got Dragon Skull and 50 coins, which is pretty good. Okay, so now we actually have unlocked something more on the map, the Loot Shrine. You can donate any unwanted items and hard or gold to unlock amazing rewards. You also find your loot stash here, a place where you can store loot for future use. So you can only carry... Uh, you can actually see it better. We'll go to Loot Shrine because you can actually see it better. So, go here to the Loot Shrine. You can only carry so many items, as shown here, 20 items. You can put some of these items in the stash. Um, yeah, so shift click is to move the stash, and control click is to move to, how to say, just donate it to the altar. So we can look at our weapons, see which is the best. So, and then when you decide I don't need any of these things, you donate them all. And you gain points towards your current donation. So you, I'm not sure if you actually could spend gold outside of the loot shrine. Evan hasn't played the, that much, but as you continue to donate, you gain stuff further and further in the rewards. So right now we're gonna get a, we might get a rare item, an extra item, dragon tickets, or a stamina boost. If we continue to the next item, we could get a rare item, extraordinary item, dragon tickets stamina boost or a bag slot so we will play see what we get oh we actually got um two rare items do we want rare shoulders or rare shield well we do not have shoulders at all so we will definitely want that we'll put it in our inventories and now yeah, it even has a special ability four percent chance to ignite for damage however we do not have enough strength to equip it so we if we did have enough strength to equip it we'd go to our inventory We'd select it and equip it here. But it's saying, no, you don't have enough strength. Which is no problem. Because we'll level up, then we'll just select strength. So. There's also here, this is for the people who helped kickstart the game. Well, that guy just talks about the hero register. So these are kickstarter people who um, helped the game kind of be created. So thank you to these people. But anyway guys, I think we'll call it an episode here, and in the next episode we'll be back for more Fight the Dragon. And if you have any questions or concerns, feel free to leave them in the comment, and I will try to answer them to the best of my abilities. Thanks guys. Later.